This is Channel 9 Eyewitness News at 6. Coverage you can count on. Right now at 6, Hurricane Isaias Isi is, is inching closer to Florida, prompting hurricane watches along portions of our east coast. But will it make landfall in Florida? We are taking a look at the storm that has now moved further to the west, which brings it along our coastline. Good evening, I'm Greg Warman. I'm Vanessa Eccles. That storm has already caused some heavy flooding in Haiti and the Dominican Republic today. Yesterday, Isaias dropped up to 10 inches of rain in Puerto Rico, knocking out power to hundreds of thousands of people. Let's check in now with certified chief meteorologist Tom Terry for the latest on how close the hurricane could come to us here in Central Florida. Could be a whisker. Uh, the forecast models overnight and early this morning Morning, shifted that track very, very close to our east coast. Some of them also weakened the storm before landfall. We're hoping that also holds true. Uh, right now, wind 75 miles an hour. You can still see a big blow up of thunderstorms and cold clouds. That's a sign of strengthening. That's a big heat engine out there. It's running, it's running, it's running and uh, generating some high surf. We already have uh, the potential of some storm surge problems along our beaches. This is the new track. If you're just getting home from work, you're saying, what in the world's going on? This storm could be very, very close to our east coast during the day on Sunday. This is the five o'clock track. First of all, we have hurricane warnings all the way from West Palm all the way through Brevard County. Hurricane watch for coastal Volusia County, but you can also see uh, we could have a category one hurricane Sunday 2 a.m. still to our southeast at 80 <laughs> miles an hour, 75 miles an hour potentially near the space coast. Again, we're going to keep close tabs and see how strong it gets tonight and during the day on Saturday. It has one full day still Still over the warmer waters, but there's a little bit of wind shear that may mitigate things a little bit. Uh, tamp it down some. And again, we do have tropical storm warnings for Osceola, Orange, and Seminole County. If you have our free weather app, you can find it in the app store. It probably sets you an alert of a advisory, perhaps, where you live. So we're going to get some tropical storm kind of squally rain bands moving in during the day on Sunday. Sunday appears to be the go day for you to get hunkered down where you are and just make sure you're ready to ride out the storm, especially along the coast. More frequent squalls could have winds easily over 40 to 60 miles an hour. Maybe a little stronger depending on if it holds on to that hurricane status. Vanessa, some of the models, including the GFS, it weakens it along the coast but does make a close, co close call. The European actually moves it inland down south as a tropical storm and just kind of a sloppy mess. So we still have some time, but we're certainly going to watch this very, very closely. And you can stay up to date with all things tropics by downloading the WFTV weather app, it will give you real-time alerts for your specific location with updates from the severe weather. Brevard County declared a local state of emergency ahead of Hurricane Isaias, and in the past hour, four free sandbag locations opened for residents who are living in the flood-prone areas. Channel 9's Melanie Holt visited one of them and spoke to the county about what else is being done to prepare for this impending storm. Brevard County Emergency Management has staff on standby as it continues to monitor the storm, and the county is encouraging residents like these lined up at Vieira's Calvary Chapel to go ahead and prepare for the storm. Brevard County has declared a local state of emergency ahead of Hurricane Isaias. The county is expecting to see three to five inches of rain starting Saturday morning through late Sunday evening and anticipate the storm to be more of a wind event. We're getting prepared and we're ready for it, but we don't think it's going to be, you know, something where we need to call for evacuations or open shelters at this time. But the county has emergency operations staff on standby to work, some virtually as needed. And late this afternoon, the county designated four sites for sandbag distribution. We ran into Linda Travell at one of them. I'm concerned, but I have lived here since 1970, so I have gone through so many hurricanes and I basically judge whether or not how prepared I'm going to be as to the. Travell doesn't plan to board up, but she could use a few sandbags for a low lying patio just in case. When Tom Terry starts rolling up his sleeves and he start he and Brian Shields start talking about, um, you know, category twos and threes, then I'm getting concerned. And the county says if you need hurricane supplies, you still have time to prepare. The county says the local state of emergency will allow it to more easily seek assistance from the state if it's needed. Reporting from Vieira, Melanie Holt, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. 
In Volusia County, ponds are being pumped down, sandbags are getting dispersed, and trash bags and trash cans and awnings are being taken down on the beach as the county gets ready for possible impacts for Isaias. Now, let's take a live look at the beach. This is Cocoa Beach. You can see that everything is currently calm. Channel 9 Volusia County reporter Mike Spears to say they're not worried, but they do want to be prepared. Now, cities and counties across Central Florida are offering free sandbags to residents. You can find a complete list of sites near you by going to WFTV.com and clicking on the Eye on the Tropics section. Violence erupted overnight in Windermere as police say a man with a baseball bat used it to beat two men to death, one a grandfather, and severely injured a woman, the grandmother. This happened in a gated community on Park Avenue, not far from downtown Windermere. Just a horrific story. If it weren't for the storm, we'd be talking about this near the top of the newscast. But boy, this is just, this is heartbreaking. Channel Line's Jeff Deal live there now. And Jeff, a suspect is in custody after apparently trying to drink some bleach. Yes, he, he is alive. He is in custody right now. He's in the Orange County Jail facing two counts of first-degree murder. Police believe he actually crashed his car inside this gated community here in Windermere as he was trying to elude a Coey police for some reason. They really don't even know why. The violence erupted, though, when the victims tried to stop him from stealing a truck at this home. Inside the gates of the Lake Crescent Reserve neighborhood, a violent attack has stunned the community. You know, uh, this is a small, quiet town. Certainly, we do not have a lot of crime, but we are not immune to crime. Police Chief Dave Ogden says 34-year-old Ezekiel Hopkins forced the gate open with his car, crashed it inside, then was looking to steal a truck. But when confronted outside the home, violence erupted. Hopkins had a bat and started swinging. As a 10-year-old boy who lived in the home with his grandparents hid and called 911, that boy's grandfather, John Savy, and his uncle were beaten to death. The defendant then went in, inside the residence and continued to attack the grandmother. The grandmother, Lisa Savy, was severely injured and had to be rushed from the scene to ORMC. Police from different agencies swarmed the home and forced their way inside a bathroom where Hopkins was holed up. They found him unconscious, possibly from drinking bleach. Hopkins has a history of domestic violence. A court record show he was accused of punching a woman and threatening to kill people, saying he was going to run the car into a house, killing us. Now he's in even more trouble, charged with murdering two people, all possibly over a truck. Correct. You know, that's a suspicion. I don't believe the family was targeted. I believe that he was just trying to look for another vehicle to steal. And he's also facing a charge of aggravated battery for beating that grandmother, allegedly. Police have credited that grandmother with helping get that 10-year-old boy to a safe area so he could call 911. Reporting live in Windermere, Jeff Deal, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. And tonight we are learning more about the family attacked in their home. Channel 9 Steve Barrett talked with their pastor who described them as a loving family and explained how the congregation is now rallying around them. That story is sad and disturbing and just the meanness at so many levels. All of that. And you feel for the family, and especially a 10-year-old little, 10 year old little boy. I'd have to call 911. Districts across Central Florida are getting ready to welcome at least some children back to the classroom. Coming up, the new tools Osceola County Schools will have to use to help make sure the students who come into the classrooms stay healthy. And what's being done to stop the spread of coronavirus after an outbreak at Seminole County's largest nursing home? Just got a new aircraft report in. Right now, the pressure's dropped quite a bit. The wind's 87. That's according to the aircraft. So I do think we have a strengthening ESAES. The latest next. The top blue line radar is driven by Toyota of Orlando and Toyota of Claremont. Count on Channel 9 Eyewitness News as we track Isaias. I'm Chief Meteorologist Tom Terry with live coverage in every newscast. Our mission is to give you a calm, clear assessment of the conditions as they change, making sure you're prepared as the storm approaches. Live every day, live with every newscast. Track Isaias with our free Channel 9 Eyewitness News weather app. Channel 9 Eyewitness News is weather coverage you can count on. In Osceola County, we're learning parents tasked with deciding how to send kids back to school this fall aren't done yet. 10,000 parents still have to pick between three options, face-to-face -face learning, online learning, or virtual school. Channel 9's Ashley Edlund found out today what each option is going to look like. 
All right. Interesting how they can go in and get their temperature checked. Thank you, Ashley. The district says it needs to hear from those parents who have not chosen an option for their students by this coming Wednesday. Well, unfortunately, it was another record setting day across Florida for the number of coronavirus deaths that have been reported. Today, the Department of Health reported another 257 people have lost their lives because of this deadly virus, bringing the statewide total to just shy of 7,000 people who have been killed by COVID-19. There were 9,000 more new positive cases reported as well. And this is a look now at the total cases across central Florida counties. Across the state, more than 3.1 million people have tested negative. Hurricane Isaias, is, 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 I've got that, looming off our coast tonight and could start impacting us as soon as tomorrow. Let's check in now with certified chief meteorologist Tom Terry on Isaias, and let's talk about what we're going to experience in the next two days, Tom. Yeah, well, Greg, this is going to be a very active weekend. Be very careful. Pay attention. This storm is already rapidly intensifying in the southern Bahamas. Here's a live view courtesy of Volusia County, Daytona Beach, the Dunlawton area. You can see the water very tranquil. Nothing to see here, but by tomorrow night, the waves will be starting to pick up. Swells are rolling in now. We will have rip currents. This water will be all the way up to here all the way up to the seawall as we head toward uh, Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon. Here's your Eye on the Tropics update. Roughly 460 miles southeast of central Florida. We've been watching just this huge flowering of clouds, very cold, very tall clouds with this moving northwest at 15 miles an hour. Now the five o'clock advisory, the last aircon, uh, aircraft reconnaissance report we had earlier today was 991 millibars and 75 miles an hour. Let me show you what the next aircraft just found as it flew through the center of the storm, a wind of 87 and pressure 985. So the pressure is one of the first things I look at. It's dropped six millibars since this afternoon. That is a pretty quick drop. Uh, this may continue. It may not. We hope it doesn't. But right now it's certainly showing signs of getting uh, reconstituted and lost some power earlier today, but it's over very warm waters. One of the reasons the track has shifted so close to the coast, the forecast models have shifted close to the coast. The European even brings it on shore down around uh, the West Palm Beach area as a sloppy tropical storm, but based on the winds increasing now, uh, that may not be the right solution. So the track very close to our coast. This is Sunday morning. Uh, Sunday afternoon and Monday. So Sunday is going to be go time. Make sure you're paying attention, local officials, especially along the beaches. By Saturday night, you need to be where you're going to be for Sunday because we're going to have tropical storm force winds approaching Sunday morning early around daybreak and just moving up the coast perhaps with hurricane force winds. We hope not, but that is the track right now. You see it right through here. Uh, Sunday morning, 2 a.m., the worst weather increasing after daybreak. We already have uh, hurricane warnings for Brevard. We also have tropical storm warnings for Osceola, Orange, and Seminole County. Let me show you the latest future track showing the developing storm. It pretty much is in lockstep with the hurricane center track. So Saturday, some outer rain bands late in the day overall pretty quiet for your day tomorrow as you make your preps now Sunday morning here is just before daybreak the center roughly right in this area the model a little bit slow on that but generally speaking Sunday morning daybreak the storm will make its northward trek right along the beaches you can see some of the heavy outer rain bands we'll get some storm surge inundation through here uh, coastal flooding occasional squalls over the interior frankly this is going to be kind of weighted on the right side but if it's right on the coast we're going to be pretty close to the action here across I-95. So here's 11 o'clock in the morning Sunday. Outer rain bands spiraling on through. This will likely not be a real prolific tornado event, but we have seen a tornadic, especially on the northeast quadrant that can move in. We'll be watching it closely, but Sunday is going to be the day that we're really keeping you very closely apprised. You'll see a lot of us. Hurricane warning conditions likely on Sunday. Winds 40, 70, maybe a little stronger. Depends on what happens tonight and all day Saturday. We still have some time for you to get your preparations, especially if you live, if you go over a bridge to get to your house, you may have to evacuate. There's your five day forecast. Relatively quiet, hot day tomorrow, a little breezy. Sunday, that's when Isaias will be impacting us. And then early next week, back to a traditional storm pattern in the afternoon. We'll be right back. Download the WFTV weather app. Get a localized forecast from Tom Terry. Just search WFTV. Brought to you by the Law Offices of Attorney Dan Newland. Wheels UK Adventure continues. We're in the lovely city of Bath. Soak up some history with Pat and Vanna. It's 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Go ahead and jump in. No, I don't think so. Brought to you by Seacoast Bank. 
Watch Eyewitness News from any device with Eyewitness News live stream presented by Simply Healthcare. Have Medicare? Choose Simply, the plan for you. In Seminole County, the number of COVID-19 deaths over the last month has dramatically increased. Today, the county announced 10 more people have died from coronavirus, a one-day record for the county. Channel 9 Seminole County reporter Jeff Left Coolidge has more on the outbreak in assisted living facilities and what is being done to try to control the spread. We reached out to the facility and were told they would send us a statement. We're still waiting on that at this hour. All right, again, we're going to continue to watch this storm. Thanks for watching Eyewitness News at 6 o'clock. ABC's World News Tonight with David Muir is next. See you tonight. See you.